Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA board. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be comparing the Mr. against standard software emulation, things that you're gonna find in RetroArch emulation on your computer because we've been spending a lot of time comparing Mr. to original hardware because that is what it's trying to replace or be as good at. But we wanna talk about what has been existing for software emulation for a while now. Before we get too far involved though, if you do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and get notification bell. Definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down there as well. The way Mr. Emulates, and I'm using air quotes, is wholly different than software emulation. If you guys want an explanation video on what a field programmable Gatorade board does, leave me a comment down below and maybe I'll make it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be comparing the Mr. Emulation against PC Engine to U-Card Emulation. We're also going to be taking a look at Sega Genesis as well, because with the emulation of the Genesis on software, I always find that the sound is sort of off for me, and it can be a little bit of a weird experience. From there, we're going to definitely take a look at a lot of Super Nintendo stuff. It's one of my favorite consoles, and we have shown some comparisons to original hardware, so I want to see what software emulation is doing up against Mr., because that's my big curiosity here. And of course, no video would be complete without my favorite arcade system all, all time, the Neo Geo. But before we jump into that, we're going to actually go to the Capcom Play system. Jotego has done an amazing job dealing with the cores for the system, and I absolutely love them. And when I put the Mr. up against Final Burn Alpha, they play extremely similarly. The colors on Software Emulation and Final Burn are slightly more muted, and I think that the Mr. cores do a better job representing what the game should look like. But where I really struggle with Software Emulation is the sound. I think the sound quality on the Mr. Cores is much, much better. So in a second here, I will let you listen to them head to head and tell me what you think. Because I have noticed that the CPS cores have better audio, but listen. There's just a little bit of hollowness in the Final Burn Alpha emulation compared to the Mister that I prefer the Mister audio quality ever so slightly. But as a head-to-head -head comparison as far as how the games play and emulate, these are extremely similar. I would say that I like the color spectrum on the Mister on the left ever so slightly, but you can't go wrong with Final Burn Alpha. It is extremely close to the original hardware. But moving right on over to Pulse Star, that's another game that we checked out in the Neo Geo Core comparison. It's one that I wanted to show on screen screen as well. And what I noticed here, and this is a very minor thing, is that the Mr. is going to emulate all the little bit of screen garbage you'll see on the left, those dots coming in. That's on original hardware and on original cartridge. The Final Burn Alpha Core does not catch that. So that means it's not as accurate. Does it matter? No, of course not. It's just little bits of garbage on the screen. But it does show that the Mr. is actually emulating everything, including all the weird little idiosyncrasies that the Neo Geo hardware is going to put up. And again, this is another core where the colors on this look near identical. I can't see any visual difference, but I will say that the sound on the Mr. Core is ever so slightly better than it is on Final Burn Alpha. And I would say that Final Burn is slowing down in places that the Mr. Core isn't, and that I also don't get slowed down on original hardware. And I'm using an i7 processor with a NVIDIA GTX 1080, and there's no issue speed-wise. Again here with Matra Melee coming in, they're going to desync. The screen on the right is going to get behind the screen on the left, even though they are frame match. So this is another instance in which Mr. is doing it accurately, keeping track of where all the frames are supposed to be, where a final burnt alpha is getting ever so slightly behind in the lag. You'll see it right there. And these audio do match. So there's just an issue where the frames aren't staying where they're supposed to be. So Mr. is definitely getting it more correct, but we're talking about a frame on an intro. And in gameplay, there really is no indistinguishable difference. So you certainly can use something like Final Burnt Alpha to emulate your Neo Geo games, but I would say in this instance, Mr. is doing a more accurate job of that. And additionally, it's a lot easier to change the BIOS on Mr. than it is in Final Burnt Alpha. I tried to switch to the UniBIOS three times, and it just didn't take, so I had to listen to the bad North American soundtrack when I was using Final Burn. 
But moving over to the Sega Genesis with Streets of Rage 2, this is a very, very close comparison. And again, it's going to come down to basically what I would consider audio. I think the Mr. FPGA is doing ever so slightly better emulating the audio compared to something like software emulation on a computer. And Streets of Rage has really good and vibrant audio. And unfortunately for software emulation, it just sounds a little muffled and it's really not what I'm looking to try to sound and hear. But taking a look visually, one of the things that I like to reference is this light here with the dithering. And I would say that Mister's definitely keeping a lot more detail in that area and it looks way more accurate to the actual console. So in these little areas visually, it's better. But go ahead and listen to what I mean about the music. I'll be back in about a second. We'll talk more about what's going on. So yeah, on Streets of Rage 2, the software emulation audio just does not sound right. There's way too much reverb and the mixing isn't just what I'm expecting. But moving right on to Yoshi's Island, I chose this one because it used to be a notoriously hard game to emulate on software emulators because it has special chips in the cartridge. And of course, software emulation has gotten much better since then. And I would say that this compared to the Mr. Core is probably the most directly close comparison I was able to get. These felt like I was playing the exact same thing, which is to say that on both the software emulation side and the FPGA emulation side, at least for Super Nintendo, they are extremely, extremely close. My only comment again is that I like the Mr. Audio quality better, and that's just down to the programming of how the Mr. is actually outputting audio across HDMI. It just goes to show that as far as Mr. is concerned, the audio has been extremely well done across all cores. And now moving on to another Genesis game. We did something light with Yoshi's Island. Now we're going to do something dark with Splatterhouse. Again, they are extremely, extremely similar. I would say that on the left, the color of those goo monsters is slightly better than it would be on software emulation in RetroArch. And I will put a list of the emulators I used down below for RetroArch so you know what I was working with. But they're really close. And what I think we're really finding out is that software emulation is still extremely good, but Mr. is definitely going to have some advantages as far as cycle accuracy is concerned and other little things that we'll talk about in a minute. But if you want to play Splatterhouse, you can play it on your Mr. You can play it on software emulation. You're going to have a really fun time no matter how you play it because it's an awesome game and one of my favorites. But you'll see here side by side, I have both audio waveforms running over top of each other and there is no breakup. So everything is syncing perfectly perfectly fine on this capture. And then just take a look at one last game. We're going to pop over to Bomberman 94 on the PC engine because I absolutely love this game. And I did notice a lot of differences between Mr. on the left and software emulation on the right. And that's that the colors aren't the same. And if I take this and I compare it to my PC engine original capture, I'm not showing it on the screen. I just looked at it. The colors that the PC engine outputs are much closer to what you're seeing on the left with Mr. than you're seeing on the right with software emulation. The sound is incredible across both. There really is no difference whatsoever. But as far as the colors are concerned, I would say Mr. is doing a way better job at that. And now we're taking a look at Bonk 2 or PC Engine 2 first on RetroArch. And these colors are a little bit closer. I would still say they're not as accurate as they should be compared to the console. But as we move over to Mr. right here, you're going to see that the colors compared to these two are a lot closer than they were with Bomberman 94. And that's just something that happens with software emulation. You're always going to get ever so slightly different results depending on what it is that you're looking at. I don't think software emulation is doing a bad job whatsoever with Bonk 2, but I would say that Mr. is just ever so slightly more accurate to the original console colors than software emulation is something like RetroArch would be. What we're going to do is we're going to pop right back over to RetroArch in about now, and you're going to see that the colors again, they're just a little bit lighter. They're a little less vibrant. They're just not quite exactly what I'm expecting to see when I'm playing Bonk 2, but it's still an awesome option. What I think we're really talking about here is they're both incredible. The thing I love about Mr. is that it's a lot easier to get the signal in an analog TV. Now I use a PC for editing and trying to get a signal out of my graphics card and into a PVM is a pain and it only works about half the time. Secondarily, I can put Mr. right 
next to my TV. It is tiny. I don't have a small PC that I put in my media center. You may, and that's an awesome option for sure, but I would say at least for ease of use and portability, Mr. is great. I put this in my bag, I biked over to friends' houses, I plugged it into the TV, and we played a ton of awesome games. So yeah, how does Mr. compare against software emulation? Well, it's certainly as good as, and in a lot of instances, it is better. Now, it's not night and day better. It's not a complete revelation, but if you're looking to emulate your games the best way possible, I 100% recommend using Mr. Field Programmable Gate Array. It's just the way I like to do things. Am I saying software emulation is not good? Of course not. Software emulation is incredible. It's great for an archival resource, and there are a lot of cores for something like RetroArch that do not work on Mr. yet, so there is some advantages to PC. But short of that, there you go. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll chat with you guys, and if you do me a huge favor, hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. We'll be back with more Mr. videos next week, and we'll have videos four days out of the week as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.